few students. How are you doing today? Hello, good afternoon.
Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to try this one more time and let us see how it works. After one. Okay, one afternoon sir thank you is there anyone else hearing me so I good well, good evening sir i just oh. heard you okay nikki how are you doing not bad i'm doing good and you tired but um the work i put on which is right question okay. sir are you planning on teaching anything tonight I am hoping to just do wonder for something, but you have to run? Because I am at work, I was hoping to stay till seven o'clock to catch the first type of first part of class, but I am going to be leaving here by 6 15. Okay, that should be fine. Welcome. All right, um, let's hope that you guys are hearing me. If you're not hearing me, matter of fact, if you're all hearing me, can you raise your hand, please? If you're hearing me, can you raise your hands for me, please? Shavoy, you're not hearing me? Okay, thank you. All right, so I can continue. You, you, you may lower your hands. Thank you. All right. Um, All right, so allow me to welcome you to chat this one. Um, some of you here, maybe just one of you that I would have interacted with in the past. The rest of you are new to me. And um, All right, the rest of you are new to me, and um, so let us see how we can get this introduction going. Uh, so the name is Mark Shand. I'll be your lecturer for Calculus 1 for this semester. I am the head of the math department and I have been working at Excelsior for quite a number of years. Um, I have no way else going. I will retire from Excelsior Community College and I enjoy teaching mathematics. I enjoy teaching my calculus courses. One of the things that I don't enjoy, and I'm telling you from day one, is when I'm speaking to students and I'm seemingly having a conversation of my own because there is no response. Um, I don't like it. I, it's one of the things that has become a pet peeve. I, I get a little agitated when I'm teaching and I'm teaching and I'm calling upon students, do you understand? And I know everyone is hearing, but no one is speaking. Um, it's really, it's really annoying. I will tell you what happened to me in the summer, this summer that just passed. 
I was teaching, 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 and I called upon a student. And I know the student is in class, and the student not answering. Calling upon other students and nobody answering. And I said, okay, all right, I'll just move on. And I moved on and did something, and the student that I was calling upon stopped and asked me a question. And I stopped the class, and I said, you know, do you think I really should answer you? Because you sat there and hear me calling you. And you said nothing to me, but no. You asked me a question and you expect me to stop and answer your question. And then I heard a, a little giggle and then the student went silent again. No, I, I don't have any control over students who don't want to talk to me in class. What control I have is when I'm asking questions and nobody seems to answer. Then I will mute and I will sit with you until the duration of the class. Um, because I can get silent too. Um, I really want to set the tone from day one. Uh, it is the class, my classes are interactive. I want to hear when students speak back to me. Why? It's not a face-to-face -face class where I can read body language and I can walk and look in your notebooks to see what is happening and the likes. I can see the knit brows. I can see when they slam your pen or pencil on the desk because you're frustrated. Um, I can see the distractions of you having your cell phone in your hand or having your own conversation. I do not know what transpires in the online class. So I ask a lot of questions. I ask lots of questions because I want to get an idea of those in class that are following. I ask the questions not to embarrass anyone or to show anyone up or to promote or elevate any other student. I ask the question because I am a teacher and I have your interest at heart. However, if I were to find that that happens, it's one of two things. Either I go ahead and reassign the class to someone else who can deal with it, because I definitely can't, or I will play the game and I will go silent as well. And we can remain silent for the duration of the class. And if I remain silent for the duration of a class because none of you decide to speak. That will be my last time coming to this class and I'm serious about it. There is no way a student needs to fail and doing it on online. When in fact, you did not play your part in the online class. Which brings me to a uh, conversation or an occurrence that happened not this academic year ending but the academic year before i taught a group of cape students mathematics and those classes were fully online i remember arranging to meet with the students because i just did not know them and i arranged to meet with the students once on campus not all the students turned up. And this young man in class, at the end of the school year, he got a distinction for his math. And later on in the year, I got a telephone call from the Council of Community Colleges of Jamaica to say, congratulations, one of your students was placed nationally. I was like, we're talking about. And the information was sent to me. Now this student was placed 20th in the island. I will forever speak about this. Um, it was a good feeling, but what was even more um, wholesome was when I called the student to say, hey, you got a distinction. I said, sir, I know, and I was calling you, but I, you missed my call. And the student was laughing. And I said, why are you laughing so much? And this is it. He said, sir, I'm laughing because you taught me 
Kate Mathematics fully online. Never was I in a face-to-face -face class with you. And I did this purely online. And ever since that young man said that to me, it has stuck to me and I'm saying to myself, then I warm to the others. Warm to the rest of the students. He was able to focus on nine. And, and, and I should say, quite a number of the other students in the class did very well. It was that they never placed nationally. The two times I met with the students face to face, he was not present. He never met with me online. I mean, face to face. All our classes were online. And he did it. Warm to Uno. You guys can come online. You can learn your calculus one online. You can get your A's online. But it takes a certain level of discipline. When class begins at five, if you're still at work and leaving at five, join the class now. I was the first one here. And even though I was the first one here, people came on the class and didn't even say good afternoon. But I will forgive you for this day. And I watched at 5.15, there were only four students. I said, okay. And I watched. And now it's quarter to six. And there are six students. Well, I said four students. There were three of you because I was locked on. So there are three of you. And I'm locked on twice. Now there are six of you. Right? So I give you enough time to get to class. Um, so because of that, I don't give a break in between my class. If I'm teaching you the seven to nine hour, chances are I will give you a break in between or I give you a break at the end. But what is important and important for you to learn and understand is the fact that when I'm speaking to you, I expect to get a response. I, that's just common brought up. See, somebody's having a conversation with you, you listen to the person because when you now in turn want to have a conversation with you, I can play the same game. And then it's going to be problematic. Because persons are going to say, Miss Campbell, I'm speaking to Mr. Shan, and um, he's not responding. Right? When in fact, this is just teaching you guys a lesson. When students don't talk back to me in my class, I don't know what it is that the students are understanding. I would have had an opportunity to, to correct a misconception, but because you are figuring that you are understanding, and in truth and in fact, you are not because you have a misconception. And you leave it at this conception from day one until exam. And then you end up failing the course. And then a teacher gets the blame. All sorts do I come across and I teach nothing because I never learn nothing. Or me can learn online enough because online is not for me. So I'm saying to you. When I'm asking questions in class. I need to hear my students respond to me in a like manner. When you ask me questions, I will respond to you. But when I'm asking a question in class and I don't get a response from you, I mean no argument with anybody. I will just go silent and sit in class. But if you ever allow me to sit in class until the end of the hour, that is it. You guys are saying to me that you're not interested to learn, and I'm going to just find someone else to, to take charge because I'm not here to waste time. I'm here to assist you for you to do well. All right, so that's the first housekeeping ticket out of the way. Um, you don't need to buy a textbook. I will definitely present the material to you in a manner where you don't need a textbook but I will give you notes. That's number two. Three, 
no longer do I set up WhatsApp groups in my class. I have responsible adults who can go ahead and set up a WhatsApp group for this session. So whoever it is, I'm at the point of my soul, can go ahead and create a WhatsApp group for Calculus 1, and then I can be added to the group. This is where I will have conversations with you as a class. And, um, and when I'm feeling generous, I will share my notes with you. I'm not obligated to share my personal notes with you. You have a responsibility to write the notes off or because I'm going to be projecting the notes in our Zoom sessions, you can have a look at it in the recording. Um, but what I find is that students don't come to class and try to bud me up and demand my notes. It won't happen this year. My notes are my notes. I have prepared notes for you. I will project those notes. If I feel to share the notes, I will share the notes and the notes will be shared via WhatsApp. Yours is a responsibility to come to class, to copy the notes. It's not for me to give you the notes, you just come to class and sit down and spectate. That's the point I'm making. I want you to be an active member of the class, active enough to take your own notes. Sometimes I may be saying something and project something, but you may have something that you can write to make it more simpler. So having written your own notes, you can translate it to make your life very easy. All right? So I'm saying this from day one because I don't want anybody to complain on me. And he refuses to send us his notes. Mm -mm. They are my notes. That I so choose and he send you. If I'm doing a question and I don't finish a question in class, I will send you the, the whole stuff. I sit and I type my notes to present to my class. If you want your notes, I will give you permission to copy my notes during the session. Part of the other reason is that students don't come to class and expect me to send them the notes that because it's their right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And if it becomes a problem, I will start handwriting in class where it is that I don't have any notes to send. I've gone ahead and typed up some notes for you to present to the class. And if it becomes an issue, I will start handwriting in the class. It is that you'll have forcing you to copy from me. Point I'm making is we don't want to come in the class and laser yourself. When I come to class, I become an active member of the class and do what it is that you need to do. All right? Um, when you would have set up the WhatsApp group, please do not send in the WhatsApp group any daily scriptures or morning devotions or morning prayers or anything of the sort. The only thing to be the WhatsApp group is used for is matters concerning calculus one. No sentiment, no send no nothing. And as a disclaimer, I hope none of you have drawn a conclusion that Sir don't have God and it does declare that I'm a Christian. But the WhatsApp group is supposed to be used purposefully for the class. I don't want to say as a matter of fact, whoever is sitting on WhatsApp group should also make me admin. Um, I don't want any morning jokes or, or none of the, the, the above. Uh, strictly for calculus one. School stuff. All right. Um, you're supposed to be seeing five hours on your timetable, but I know all of you are seeing four hours. One of the things that has happened to us since COVID, all the groups have done, have agreed to doing this. I know you guys have a class from seven to nine, so do I. And because it's a six hour long course, we 
need an extra hour the timetable. You are not seeing it, but I'm going to tell you where it is. Mr. Shan, not... excuse me. Yes, please. Hello. You're speaking, but your voice keeps fluctuating. Um, so sometimes you're louder than other times you are lower. I've also okay. asked a question in the chat if the recordings will be available to us. Yeah, man, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. Um, I'm getting to that. All right. Um, thanks for the notification. Um, one of the things. All right. So, let me just finish that thought. Where was I again? I was going somewhere. Um. Uh, You're talking about the WhatsApp group and then right. Below. Right. So, um, so I would need to be admin as well. Um, so it is that I can help to control and to manage what 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 happens in the in the in the in the in the WhatsApp group itself, in and of itself. Uh so on a Thursday, no, today is Wednesday, yes. So our class is scheduled for a Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday five o'clock to seven o'clock. I have a class from seven to nine, so do you. And then on a Thursday, we meet from seven o'clock until nine. So this is where the trick comes in. Because it's a six hour long course. And we need five hours per week. I'm recommending that we meet on a Thursday from nine o'clock to ten o'clock. And then the classmate says, No, sir, we can't do that because I have too much time and so forth and so on. Trust me. The other groups before you have done it. And I'm going to guarantee you when nine o'clock come, if you're not watching the clock, you wouldn't know that nine o'clock gone. All right. So think about it. Um, we can do a dry run tomorrow to see what it feels like, what it looks like. But the time is going to be needed to complete the, the course. The course is not, it's not difficult. Um, there are going to be one or two areas that will take a little bit more effort than other areas. Uh, but really and truly, if you commit yourselves to doing what is expected of you, you're good to go. I promise you. I promise you that you'll be good to go. Once it is that you do what is so expected of you, um, you know, completing your work on Edicosoft that you'll be re reintroduced to. I know some of you are familiar with it. Some of you may not be. But um, once the WhatsApp group is set up, I'm going to ask persons to just drop the emails um, in the WhatsApp so that I can go ahead and create your, your profile on Edicosoft. I was in the process of submitting some grades today and recognize that the students who got C minuses are the ones who did very well on Edicosoft, but very poorly on the exam. And thankfully, they did very well on Edicosoft and the mid semester. Had it been the other way around, they would have failed, of course. So, quite a number of students who had, when I looked at their profile today, um, when submitting the grades, had it not been for the Edicosoft and the mid semesters, they would have failed because the exam grade was very low. I say this to say to you, Edicosoft is a part of your part of the components that contributes towards your 40%. The course is 60, 40, 60% 60 for exam, 40% for coursework. Tentatively, 20% for your mid semester examinations. I may give you one exam or I may give you two. 10% for your homework pieces on Edicosoft and 10% for your quiz pieces on Edicosoft. So, edu so your coursework is 40% and your exam is going to be 60%. <clears throat> Somebody was asking about the recordings. 
the recordings will be uploaded to my YouTube channel that I will give you access to once it is that the, the WhatsApp group is, is set up. You can look into the description of the WhatsApp to find the YouTube channel. Now, when you look into the channel, I'll have hmm, scores of recordings. I teach multiple courses, and all the courses that I would have taught are embedded within the channel. Um, you'll find you'll find many calculus one recordings there from 2000, 2000, yeah, from 2020. And you know, I think I would have taught calculus one maybe two times for that year, two times for the other year, I think because we had a summer group. So within the channel, you'll see quite a number of past recordings for calculus one. There you also see recordings for calculus two. And of course you see the recordings for the other courses that I, I would have taught um, over those many years. What's the point I'm making? At no point in time should you be bored because not only that you'll have your Edicosoft pieces to complete, but you have recordings, current and past recordings to listen to. So the convention that I use for you to identify the course is using the course code MATH, M-A-T-H, 3601. And I will say, when I'm sending a recording, I'll say MATH 3601, semester one, 2023. So I tell you what semester the course is done. So at least you can see um, which year in particular we're referencing. Um, if, you, if you're not attending class, it would be very nice for you to send a note that you know you're not attending class so that I know. If for argument's sake you are at work and unable to speak, um, send a note, sir, I'm at work, unable to speak, but I'm listening in. You know, if you're on the road, on the way, in commute, say in a taxi, let me know, say in a taxi, because I really don't want you to talk on your phone while you're in a taxi, because I don't want nobody pushing a knife on you and take away your cell phone or whatever the situation is. But let us have a two-way com um, conversation, no? Um, going. If for, for some reason I'm unable to attend the class, you know, grab my phone and say, now what's up, that is your plan. Teacher pop down, teacher has a meeting, teacher has whatever it is. Um, I want my meeting today. And what often comes to after that is I will make up with you. All right, so you don't have to worry about me missing a session. The times will always be made up. Right? So I want us to have a, a sort of symbiotic sort of relationship. I first give you respect, and then I expect to get back respect from you as I believe, quite frankly, that respect is earned and not deserved. Um, when I'm teaching, I have a limitation to check my chat. So I'm going to give each and every one of you the responsibility. Once you see that there is something in the chat, when it is convenient, don't just break my thought to say, sir, there's something in the chat. But when, once the time becomes, um, you know, it's conducive for that, if I take a pause, you can say, sir, um, you can look at the chat or something of the sort. Or if you send me a direct message, when the time is appropriate, convenient, you can, you know, bring it to my attention. I've tried and it's one of the areas that I fail in. When I use a, a, a particular device, it gives me a notification. So I see it comes up on the screen. But if I'm using another device, um, I don't see that notification at all. So sometimes I don't, I'm unaware of it. So I'm just gonna ask you to be patient with me in that regard. Um, yeah, in a nutshell, that's, those are my expectations of the class. I will then now give you an opportunity to, to, to tell me your expectations. I will give you a copy of your syllabus 
once it is that you you send me the WhatsApp group is set up and you send me the information, I will attach your syllabus to your Edicosoft platform and you can just go to syllabus to the left icon and to download what your syllabus looks like. You don't need to print. You can just see if it's safe that you have an electronic version of it. All right. Now, are there any questions of me? Sir. Yes, please. I know you said um, additional one or mm -hmm. what if it's a case where we have an extension from the class that we have at that point, or we have assignments completing at that point. What do we do then? No, man. That class is going to be the extension from my class. So I have you tomorrow from seven to nine. So I'm just extending my class from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. Okay. Right. So it's not, it's not a case on a Wednesday where class ends at seven. And I'm going to extend it from 78 because I'm aware that you have a class. So the extension will really be from my class. So which is why I'm suggesting that it be tomorrow that we have that sort of extension. Answers your question? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, great. Um, anybody else? I need to hear your expectations or not. Uh, sir. <clears throat> yes, Dre. Um, if it's a case where we have a question, we do not want to break the topic or um, we don't want to, you know, disrupt the class, but we have a, we are lacking some understanding. Mm -hmm. Do you have like um, office hours or, um, you know, online office hours basically that we can either shoot you a message or um, send you the, the issue that we're having so that we can further understand it? Because I'm not going to say I'm the best in maths, but um, I... I've heard about your skills and I would want to just make sure that I leverage the, your skill sets to accomplish my goals. I, I'm, I'm trusting that it's all good things that you're hearing about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, you, you don't need to say it, but I'm just trusting and praying that it's all mm -hmm. good things. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I one of, one of the things though that I want, Dre, is that if you are, if you are not understanding in class, you know, um, you raise your hand right at that point and um you know i'll do my very best to to to, to take your question because when i wait until the class finish and then i add more something on top of what you know understand you are going to be um very lost and that is going to be a defeatist purpose yes i do have online hours trust me students message me all over the place oh one very important point that I forget. So, you know, some of you, um, like Andre, you know, him, him call himself up boy down a road on WhatsApp. So when the WhatsApp group make up now, I me say, hot boy down a road. In my headspace, I'm going to think it's me. I'm not going to know who it is. So I'm going to ask. So when you go to WhatsApp, you will see me put myself as teacher shand. Not that because I want to call myself teacher Shan, but you know, when the students or I'm a part of another WhatsApp group, they can use the name of the WhatsApp to identify me. Because there are times I may want to touch base with somebody in the class for one reason or another. And when I go through the WhatsApp, I'm seeing sex a girl, bald, um, this and that, and I don't know who is who. So I'm gonna ask you for the purpose of this class and Chances are, God's sparing knife and everything. Um, I may see you also for calculus too, that you have some indication in your WhatsApp name um, that, you know, this is a person. Um, it, it can be a first name, it could be a last name, or it could be your full name. But, you know, as and you'll find this as you, as you go from, you know, institution to institution, it becomes, um, or from class to class, it becomes very important. I heard my assistant today complain about the very thing that um, she's trying to touch base with a student who is failing and can, you know, if the student does an extra piece, chances are the student can pass the course. So you see, it is sometimes for a very good reason. And for the life of me or for her, she couldn't find a student. Fortunately, I taught the student and I was able to go into another group that I have 
to say, look for this number. This is the last message I got from the student. And my colleague was like, then how many are supposed to know? The person named themselves sexy, sexy something, right? So sometimes, you know, when we are touching base and we can't find it, it may be to your detriment because we are trying to call you to say, here the plan. You know, say borderline, you're out at a 49. Come and do this one piece for me so that I can, you know, substitute something for you, a coursework piece, whatever the situation is. So it's very important. But yes, message me. And what is also important, very important, don't just take up yourself and just message me outside of the WhatsApp group. Um, there are many students requesting prerequisite overrides. My cell phone is no longer my cell phone. My cell phone now belongs to the college. And students who I don't have an, uh, um, any sort of interaction with are messaging me to say, sir, support, and so on. On a daily basis, I get a, a minimum of 50 WhatsApp messages. Some of them, truth be told, I cannot go through. Because when I finish a long day, and I say, OK, it's lunch time. And I start going through the WhatsApp, um, especially when there's no name attached to it, I will read a WhatsApp message and don't know who on earth I'm speaking to. But guess what? Because I know I have a calculus one class. I know I have an obligation to touch base with the group. So you may have something very private to talk to me about what you need to do. You can get my attention in the WhatsApp group, the class WhatsApp group, sir. I sent you a private message. And from there, I click on your name or your number, and it takes me directly to your message, and I can respond to you privately. But if you take up yourself and not tell me, say you talk to me, that message is going to be stayed, chances are unread. And then you are going to come to you and say, Sir, I message you. Hear me out. My phone sometimes run hot. Sometimes when I get home, I'm very tired and I can't go through all my messages. All right? But if you send something, I know I have a responsibility every day to at least check in with my class. I may check in, I may not respond, but I will check in to see if there are any things, you know, any questions or whatever the situation is. And of course, I'll respond to you in a timely manner. All right, any other questions? Thanks for those two questions. Any other questions? No expectations of me. Sir, I just went on YouTube and I saw a video that you posted, I think last month. And it was a four hour <laughs> video. Was that a Mataran or <laughs> an explanation of <laughs> All right, so sometimes you have to ask because I don't, <laughs> my attention span is not that wide spread. Uh, how do you pronounce your first name? Asaniel. Asaniel? Neil. Asaniel, okay. okay. Unfortunately, sometimes we have. um four hour long classes. Fortunately for you, um, on a Wednesday, we have a two hour long class, but I'm going to tell you, you see that Thursday class, you may say that your attention span is weak. But if you're not watching the time, the time is going to run off. And when I say to you, all right, guys, I'll talk to you next class, you can look at the clock and say, gee, some piece, sir, time run off already? I promise you. I promise you. I heard surgery says that he's not a love of math or he don't like math or something of the sort. You know, I'm I'm not even going to pay him any mind as it relates to that or any of you any mind as it relates to that. One of the things that I often say, you know, I don't, you don't have to be bright to come to my class, you know, to do stuff. I just want you to be purposeful. I just want you to be purposeful. Um... I just want you to be a diligent student, somebody who comes 
outcomes very regular. When you miss class, you miss instruction. I give you homework to do, you do your homework. Um, one of the things that I love to do is when I finish teaching a topic, I go straight into the past papers and we'll do the past paper questions together. If I give you a past paper question, I want you to attempt it. All of this foolishness you're doing, attempt it. Make me tell you it's foolishness. Nobody in the class can laugh after you. It's only me alone supposed to laugh. Um, you know, just if you do your part, I promise you that you are going to be fine. I promise you. But if you don't do your part, you can fail. Because even though, even though the course is not difficult, you're going to have quite a bit of work to do. And one of the other things I'm going to say to you, prayer without works is dead. So whether or not you have an excellent teacher and you don't put in the effort, the energy, the manpower, the oil, the grease, whatever you call it, you're not going to pass a course. You'll not pass a course. So if you meet me, all I'm asking for you to do is to, is to be diligent. I know sometimes with my students, I'll give them work to do. And they will say, boy, sir, it was a rough week and I don't get a chance to do it. I can understand that. But if I come at the following week and don't do the work, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> we're going to have a problem. One grouping of students. Matter of fact, it was a calculus one and calculus two class. I had some, not last year, but the year before group. Um, one of the students said, well, now that sir finished talking, um, don't let him fool you here. Nice teacher, but him get dark when he come on to him schoolwork. And that sums up my personality pretty well. I can be a very nice teacher. Um, I hate a mean teacher. I hated my teachers who were very mean, and I've had one or two of those. But I can be as pitch black when you're not pulling your weight, and I don't care how old you are. Once you come into my class, you're supposed to be working and working hard. So I move from zero to 100 in a millisecond when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, one of the other things I should tell you now, guys, multitasking when you're doing an online class is very dangerous. So some of you at home, you're taking care of the baby, you're taking care, you're, you're cooking food, you have me on speaker listening to me, but you're not watching the screen, and you're doing one manner of stuff. And then you're going to say, oh, I went to class. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. So I'm going to say to you, if you're going to be multitasking, be purposeful. If you're going to put on the food, put on the food and walk with the computer in the kitchen. Need a flower, drop another pot, but you're going to watch the screen. You have to participate in the process so that the process does not leave you alone. Trust me. In a blink of an eye, I am going to be moving on to another topic. Not that I'm running very fast, but I also have a syllabus to complete. So in any given night, I could be doing two concepts or at most three concepts. If there are small concepts, I can do as many as four concepts. So if you miss one, chances are you're going to miss a whole lot because chances are what it is that you would have missed I'm going to be building on top of that. And if I build on top of that the next class and you miss what, what I did from before, you are going to be lost. All right. Going once. Are there any other um, questions that you have of me? Any other questions that you have of me? Let me know now um, so that I can so that I can um, just start, you know, Sir, yeah, go ahead, my dear. Since since you be a part of the WhatsApp group mm -hmm. and you want admin privileges, why not just create the group? Who me? No miss. Yes, sir. You? No, sir. Mm -mm. Not at all. Um, I I I've, I've graduated from that. My students supposed to can take part in a phone class, you know. My students supposed to can take part at at the whole process. Um, one of the things that I I don't encourage people to do is maybe to go ahead and store the numbers to the stuff where somebody can create the group and um, post a link um, in the chat for the Zoom so that people can join from the link. Um, but no, I have too many other things to do but to sit upon Edicus Soft and to 
um, send off the recording and, and for me to go on. Nah. When somebody comes to the class, I'm going to say, hey, admin, can you just add this person for me, please? Yeah, man. So it's it's that's the relationship that we're going to be doing, working with. I couldn't tell when last I set up a WhatsApp group. My students always do that for me, and they have done a good job. So if any of you in here have done it for me in the past, big up on yourself. But no, sweetie, uh, yeah, that's that's your responsibility. <laughs> All right, but the WhatsApp group will need to be set up before we leave class tonight so that I can get your information, so I can put you guys on Editor Soft so that you can be there um, and we can, what I'll do is give you a quick navigation of Edicus of tonight and just do one or two quick stuff. And then the bulk of the teaching will begin tomorrow. Just want to get some of the, the housekeeping matters outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's now 6.18, I'm gonna pause for about five minutes so that I can give you an opportunity to, you know, to set up the WhatsApp. Um, and then I will come back to you um, trying to, uh, I'm going to see if I can do the navigation of Edicosoft and a bit of teaching. And we can end. All right. So I'll give you five minutes. We'll come back at Come back at six at six at six twenty five. I give you six. All right, muting.
All right. Um, I was having a difficulty in on to Zoom and what to system. So that's for the delay. Has anybody joined the link here for the group? Hello. What if somebody? Right here, right here, sir. Mic check. Check mic one, two. Right here, sir. Okay. Um. While well, this thing comes up. Have all of you selected your CAC plus one course already on Arian or is it not yet up? I was trying to select mine, but I wasn't able to find it. Okay. Um, I had spoken with my head of school. She said I should be able to go ahead now, so I'm going to check after class to see if it comes up. Okay. Because I've not used this system for a while, also it is now saying that it's installing updates. All right, so I'm actually trying to join this the the, the link that was placed in the in the chat, but it's not happening for me. Let me try it again. It's loading without success. No, it's not happening for me at all. Let me first. first. All right, so I just sent you the link to the YouTube channel while I wait for this system to update so I can take it through maybe about another 15 minutes worth of stuff. So we will dismiss a little early tonight. All right, so I'm in. You'll recognize that I use multiple devices because sometimes one device goes down. And um,
I'll just go ahead and connect to the to the other device. So I'm now here three times. Have any one of you used Elicosoft in the past? Know how to use Elicosoft? No, I have not, sir. So I don't have any skill sets on that. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, mean what? I've used Microsoft before. Okay. I wonder who taught you how to use it yourself. Let me find Welcome, Sir Campbell. Um, oh, what is this? Name? All right, so, um, I'll share my screen. Let me know if you're seeing the screen, please. I just okay. attempted to share something with you. Not yet. Still saying start sharing, but it has not come up as yet. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the information. See it now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right, so that's it, that's all. That's the interface. Uh, you will be required to, to log on at least two times per week. And I say at least two times because we meet twice per week. So we are going to be logging on to Edicosoft during our class time. I expect you to log on to Edicosoft outside of your class time as well. For Edicosoft, you will recognize that the Jamaican flag is shown. When you're first using it, the system will go default by saying United States. And when you're trying to log on, it will say to you that something about your credentials are incorrect. Just hover. You don't need to press anything. I'm just hovering over Jamaica and a whole host of these things are coming up. So all of here, these 15 or so countries are using Edicosoft. And we are going to log on in our region or territory. So I select Jamaica. And then I'm going to enter my email address. And then I'm going to enter my password, and I'm going to click log in. Now, when you log on to the platform for the first time, it will take you through five, no five green ticks. If you have those five green ticks, it suggests that your system passes the test. If not, we have to fix where the problem exists or else you're going to be having a challenge navigating through Edicosoft. More than likely, it will be your pop-up blocker. 
what the pop-up locker does is to prevent the information from the background to come to the foreground. So the system will open up, but it stays in the background and you will not see it. All right, and then you say to me, sir, the platform is not working. So you need to go ahead and disable your pop-up blocker. Then because I'm seeing those five green ticks, I'm going to click continue. And when I click continue, I will see all of this. Now, what I have not yet done is to request um, my courses for this semester. Um, that will be done by tomorrow. But let me go into a class that did I set up? No, I set up calculus two already. Let me go into a business calculus class that was set up in the summer. So this is what the interface would look like. Um, when you're added to the platform, the information will, this, the names of my students will be populated here. The names will be populated and I will be able to see who you are. I mean, that you are in my class. It also tells me if you are logged on, when last you log on, and it gives me information about what it is that you're doing. Let me go to the student view so that you can see what you will be seeing because this is what I, as a lecturer, will be seeing. So you'll be seeing something like that. You know, welcome to Edison Soft. To the left of it, you have your course tools. Um, your resources, your communication, your account, your survey. When you click on course tools, you'll see a host of all the other stuff. Now, I did not set up this business calculus, so there will be no, no syllabus there. This class is, is just empty. But when you click on syllabus, oh, come on. When you click on syllabus, it will tell you syllabus not available. But um, once you click on syllabus, once I set up the editor software for you, I'll attach your new syllabus to the platform. So once you click on that, you'll see your syllabus. You don't have to print it. Save the trees. You can save it, um, you know, you can WhatsApp it to yourself and you go through it, you know, in a tiny manner or you can save it to your computer or your tablet and you can go and view it at any point in time to see that what it is that I'm doing is what it is that is on your syllabus. That's another thing that I need to tell you. And I will also tell you that as I go along, and um, and other housekeeping matters come up, I will stop and talk to you about it. Um, you are going to be required to to go through the syllabus with me. You are going to be my conscience. You are going to be my 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 supervisor to say, sir, you have not done this topic, or sir, you have done this topic. So you are going to help me to complete the syllabus. When I do this, it tells me, or it tells you rather how many other areas I will need to go through and in what time I will need to go through those areas. In. So when you are actively involved in the process, you will recognize if I'm moving fast, it's because I have other areas to complete. Because if I move slow and can't complete the syllabus, you are the ones also going to be complaining to say that certain never complete the syllabus. On the platform, you're going to be having your tutorials. Your tutorials are, are pretty much like your, your online textbook. And this is what I said to you, you don't need to go buy a textbook. Save that money for something else. You don't need to buy a textbook because everything about Calculus 1 is going to be embedded in your tutorials. As I said earlier, I will also supplement it with by giving you some of my notes, further explanation, um, by working past people questions and sending you the solution to the past people questions. Let me pause again. Some of you, I'm sure it's not this calculus one class students that, you know, this is coming up across. So, but some students, Mr. Chanel work a question in class today and next week you go and do your exam and it's about all on certainly with an awkward thing like this 
And I go back and say, no, man, I recognize the first answer, man. And the same question was working in the class come up on the exam. Some students are not in a position to identify that sir actually did the question before. Because when sir was doing the question, you weren't paying him any mind. And you weren't responsible enough to go through the question. I say this because this was a conversation among a group of us lecturers that some questions were repeated. And that's possible. That's that's fine. All examination body repeat some questions. And um and the students couldn't recognize the questions when the market is foolishness and the question was done in class before. The question was done in class before, but students just couldn't recognize what was being done and end up failing the course. Please don't let that happen to you. Don't allow anybody to play them foolish games with you and make them win. Start your question in a class today. And a month later, you get a similar question or, or the exact question. You should be able to start the question and complete it to the T. Please, and not teaching robots. And then now you're going to have your assessment. So your assessments will be those um, questions, homework and quizzes questions that I'll be putting on the platform for you to do. Questions are to be done on a weekly basis. Um, sometimes lazy man writers take over students and they, 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 they want to pile up the, the assessments until afterwards. There is no learning experience. There is no knowledge gain. If you just sit down and just do all the pieces one time and call it a day, it's not just to get a grade. The editor stuff is to also help you to pace yourselves um, as Sir goes along in doing some questions on the, on the, on the thing. All right, so don't fall prey to that, please. All right, then you're going to have your drop box. Your drop box is sometimes I may give you a question that I want you to work on. I'll put that in your drop box and you work on it and you upload it to the drop box. And then you're going to have your grade, my grade. Your grade is to be able to track where your progress, where, where am I in the semester? You know, you can track your own process. So what I'm saying to you is that none of you will go into the exam without knowing, your, for example, your mid-semester grade, not the mid-semester grade, the coursework piece, what percentage you're going into the exam with, right? Because you, you have access to it. Um, attendance, um, you know, I cannot register online if I so choose um, and, you know, and support and so on. Uh, communication, there are times I will send you emails. So communication, I can send you an email or an announcement. Um, because if I have anything in announcement, no, I don't have anything in announcement. Hey, that is new. Okay, they did some work on that. That interface here is new. All right, so I can send you announcement or I can also send you an email through the platform. All right. So that's what it is. I will get you your access um, tomorrow. Um, you know, once it is that I would have received your information. Let me try that WhatsApp thing again because I'm not. All right, um, no such luck. So, so that's what it is with Erico. Uh, I did promise you, I did promise you a piece, what it is that we're going to be doing. Uh, I will show you briefly what I'll be moving into to come tomorrow, God's willing. So if you can read around it, That would be good. Hmm.
So I'll be looking at limits and theorems. Limits and theorems. Calculus 1 is all about integration and differentiation. Calculus. So it's really on integration differentiation. But differentiation, no. We have many different forms. Quotient and product and chain and this and that and, you know. And integration, we also have many different forms. So even though we're looking at two areas, differentiation, integration, you will have many subsets under under each. And those subsets you will need to learn. So what I will be doing with you is speaking about the intuitive approach. So looking at limits and theorems, looking at limits and theorems. And this is what I say to you. I, I actually don't write my notes. I actually type my notes out. There are times I will write on the screen. I have a device that I can write on the screen and hopefully you can see it legibly. And um, so, you know, I'll do it both ways. Um, I will send you the notes or, um, you know, have you write and make your own notes in class. So I'll be looking at limits, um, the intuitive approach. And one thing that I'll leave you with is, uh, for example, one, it says we are to evaluate the limit. Evaluate the limit as x tends to 1 of x plus 1. I'm going to use only two lines. This line here, let me spotlight what it is that I'm doing so you can see exactly. I'm, looking, I'm going to be talking about this line and these two and this line. Only those two lines I'm doing for tonight. These two lines. So example one says, I'm supposed to be evaluating the limit as x tends to 1 of x plus 1. So I'm evaluating the limit. I'm trying to work out what? I'm trying to work out the value of x, pretty much. So it says to evaluate the limit as x tends to 1. This little thing about Bob under the limit, L-I-M. L-I-M is not 1-I-M or I. -M. It's limit. And the shortening for limit, L-I-M-I-T, is L-I-M. So you see L-I-M and then you see X with an arrow. I mean, it's like a ray. It's like a ray. So the X with that arrow pointing to the right and the number. How, how do I read that? It says limit as X tends to 1. That is saying to you that X is not equal to 1. It is only tending to 1. It, has a, it is approaching 1. It can get near to 1. It favor one, but guess what? It will never ever be one. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. A lot of teachers may say, substitute it in it. But for the intuitive approach, um, we're going to be using our intuition as it suggests. The final line that I'm going to talk about is from the LHS and from the RHS, from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side. Think of it this way. When you go to school and them say to you, cross road, somebody tell me how you cross the road. Hmm? How you used to cross the road when you were smaller? Or even you big here, how you cross the road? Look up, look down. When you say look up, you mean look up in the sky? Left, right. Okay, then good. So you can look from left the left hand again. side and the right hand side. And then look again. Love that. Love that. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're looking from the left hand side and the right hand side. So we need to see how it is that the limit is approaching the function from the left hand side. And when we finish doing that, we also need to look at how the limit is approaching the function from the left-hand side. So we have to look at the limit. You mean from the right-hand side? From the right-hand side, yeah. I just said that to see if you're paying attention, right? So you have to look at the limit from both sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And then we say that it is of a good behavior 
if the limit approaches the same something from the left hand side and from the right hand side. So in this particular example that we will be looking at tomorrow, God's willing, we recognize that from the left hand side, the limit was approaching 1.9999999999. And you can say, sir, call that two. And I would agree with you. But from the right hand side, it is also approaching 2.0000000001. And so we can call that, sir, call that two also, yeah, man. I mean, sir, good. We say that the limit is of a good behavior since the limit approaches two from the right and from the left. So the limit exists. And it is of a good behavior. Why good, sir? Because it behaves itself from the right hand side, from the left hand side. Now, if the if the limit from the left hand side does not equal to the limit on the right hand side, so for the left hand side, you got 1.99999. But for the right hand side, we can get um 3.00001. Cut now, cut now key. Because one said two and the other one said three. So that can't keep at all. So something wrong with the one there. The limit does not exist. The eh? limit does not exist. So that's all that there is to limit. That's the intuitive approach. And then now we're going to use the calculations method. The intuitive approach is longer, but we have to get you into understanding what it is. The intuitive approach is from first principles. And all of this is going to be important, especially when I move into um, differentiation from first principles. And when I move into other areas of the calculus one, you'll need to have the intuitive approach and just that, that basic understanding as to why it is that you're doing what you're doing um, in order to understand the other areas, all right? So that's it, you get the limit. It says extending to something. It is not equal to that something. It is only approaching that something. And what, is, what you're gonna be trying doing is to go as close as you can. Close, 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 close. As close to the number that you can. And you see, if you get close to that number and you evaluate your answer and it gives you a value, you say, okay, you put it down. When you put it down now, you're going to look at the right-hand side and you're going to do the same treatment. But remember, no, you know, the left-hand side, something is different from your right-hand side, something. So what do you mean by that? Thank you for asking. So you will live at number 15. What is the number to your left of your house? Anybody, somebody. Thirteen. 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 Now, what is the number to the right of your house? Seventeen. Very good. That's the point I'm making. So you live at fifteen. So the person that lives to your left is going to be at thirteen. So guess what? It means that the starting point is thirteen. The starting point is thirteen. But the person to your right is going to be seventeen. So that starting point is going to be seventeen, right? And you're going to move from the thirteen and come closer to my 15. And you move from the 17 and try to come close to my 15. So the left-hand side is going to move towards me. The right-hand side is going to move towards me. And when it when the left-hand side touches me, it's going to give me a number. When the right-hand side touches me, it gives me another number. Them two numbers, they better be the same something. If them are not the same something, something is wrong. Something is wrong. If it's either our investigation is not correct and we have to go back to the drawing board or something wrong with the function, or I saw the man and give the function. I'm one of them office if you know, say something like this. No, nah, go on, no nah, keep. All right. So in a nutshell, that's what we'll be doing. I hope that it it, it, it whets your appetite. I'm gonna say thanks for coming out. Have yourself a good day. You too, sir. Thank you. Bless up.